Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for being here. I really do appreciate that. We are talking about STP phase two. It is starting, it is coming towards us very quickly. And of course with Gov reports, we're absolutely ahead of the curve. So let's begin. Uh, my name is Deborah Thompson. If you don't know me, that's a picture of me a hundred years ago, but um, and then we're very fortunate to have Tiana Tran with us. Hi, Tiana. Hi, everyone. Um, so Tiana's here for all the difficult questions. I'm only here for the easy questions. But uh, yes, let's let's just move on. <laughs> so we're here to talk about single touch payroll phase two. We're important dates. There are important dates we need to remember. To let you know what isn't changing, and there, there is a lot that's not changing to let you know what is changing and the sort of preparation that I think might be a good idea for you as you prepare to get your clients on board with STP phase two. We're gonna look at converting to STP phase two and we're also gonna look if you have previously with STP phase one imported CSV files, we can still do that with STP phase two and so we're also gonna have a look at that. So um, as agents, uh, STP is part of your GovReport Savvy Agent subscription. So you get it just as is part of your normal subscription. There is also the IM STP reporting payroll module and the IM business ledger. Now they are for clients if they want to actually do run the payroll or run a small accounting software, you are able to help your clients with that as well. And of course, most of what we're talking about today um, absolutely applies to that as well, but we're just re concentrating today on Gov reports. So important dates, 1st of January, I'm sure you've already heard that it is the 1st of January 2022 that the ATO expects us to start. Now, because of course we all need a break, the ATO have very kindly given us a range that if we start by the 1st of March, we are still going to be compliant. And that's really handy because you've got this time now to prepare when are your clients needing to change so you can take the opportunity to have a bit of planning and slot your clients in so that you can get them all done in a you know, not hurried way that you don't have to change all of your clients on the same day because everybody's gonna have questions. The ATO have also produced um, documents that you can send out to your clients, telling them what the sort of changes there are going to be in, in single touch payroll, which you can download from the ATO's website. So what isn't changing? So the way you submit and lodge your STP report, that is staying exactly the same. We don't have to think about that. The types of payments that are in scope for STP reporting, it's payroll, the um, general idea, if you like, everything that you put through payroll is going to be reported in STP, but the fact, so all of that isn't changing, it's just where you're reporting it that may be changing depending on what it is. Your STP reports are still due on or before the payday. So that, so your timing isn't going to change. So whatever timing you've had for your clients up till this point, that's still going to be there. Unless of course you're one of the very few that has got some uh, reporting concessions. The taxation and superannuation obligations, they haven't changed. You still you know, need to take out PAYGW from employees, payrolls, and you of course still need to pay them superannuation guarantee. Your BMS ID, which you perhaps might not have really paid attention to, but that's the, the number that the ATO is recognising each client. Um, so that is going to be the same as in previous lodgements. So we don't have to re-register or do anything like that. And when rolling over, using the rollover facility, if you have to do your next um, STP lodgement, that is going to be still available. So um, that's what I use, I guess, most so, and I, I'm really happy about that. And your end of year finalisation that's not going to change. So however you did it in June last year, it's going to be the same 
that you're going to ha need to do it in next June. So all of those things aren't changing. But what are, what is changing? So it might look like a long list, but you probably already have all of the information. It's just you're going to be putting it perhaps in a different place than you were with STP1. So there's going to be additional information that you are telling uh, STP and therefore telling the ATO as you go along with each pay lodgement. There's going to be employment conditions. You know, are they part time? Are they casual? You're going to have income type and country code. Now that might seem a bit strange, but if you have any holiday, you know, holiday makers, you know, the working holiday makers, or any of the clients have staff that are Australian residents but are working overseas, that's where that comes in. The disaggregation of gross. Now that sounds like what on earth could that be? But basically it means that if you've had 10 different items all put into the gross wages, you may be pulling those or some of those back out and putting them in their own section. So we sacrifice, we have to change a little bit how we have dealt with it previously. Lump sums again, the child support, uh, the garnishes and the um, child support deductions. And this is really uh, going to save paperwork eventually as you go along. Uh, we are telling the ATO information and now in with STP phase two, the ATO is going to be passing on that information to Services Australia if it's applicable. So this is where we're getting some of these specific things that we're actually telling um, STP. And if you change software, so if you come from some other software and you're using GovReports, it's about making it easier to actually uh, change over from the ATO's point of view so that hopefully there's not the confusion about two files for a client. So just to give you a, a, a quick look at the screens, um, the employment basis, so you know, are they full-time, part-time, casual, that's going to be defined each STP lodgement. The tax treatment, what, you know, are they claiming the, the tax-free threshold or are they not claiming that? So that's going to be information that the ATO is going to receive again with every lodgement. When they cease work, the idea is that that information there will save you having to provide separation certificates. Now, I don't actually know if that's going to be um, immediately that you turn over the STP2. Uh, the ATO hasn't, I haven't been able to find that yet, but certainly their ultimate aim is that you won't be doing separation certificates anymore. Income types. Again, this is about helping the ATO go along and see that everybody is paying the right amount of tax. Are they salary and wages? Are they closely held? Are they labour hire? Are they voluntary agreement? So that the ATO can classify them a bit better and if they see something wildly um, unexpected, then that's when they're going to be able to come back to the client and say, well, you know, is this really a working holiday maker? Or is this somebody else? You know, are you, have you got the right income types? The country code, as I mentioned, is just uh, if you are an Australian resident and you're working for an Australian company overseas, but you're being paid in Australia, then again, that's going to be defined or if you're an inbound uh, working holiday maker, then again, that is also so that the ATO has that information from that first STP lodgement for them. As I mentioned, the disaggregation of gross, things that we previously put into gross like bonuses and commissions, director's fees, paid leave, salary sacrifice, overtime allowances, that is coming out of the gross. And I will talk a little bit more about that in a moment. So as you go through, um, GovReports have got great screens for help. Um, I have been looking at them extensively and they do give you a lot of information. So they give you those different codes so that if you are reading the information on the ATO's website, you do um, understand what those codes are about. So it is very important because they certainly have defined a lot more. Uh, for example, with the salary sacrifice, 
Now with the celery sacrifice previously, we took that off the growth and we reported it um, separately, but it was, and I will give you an example in a minute rather than flounder. Uh, basically, we, we took it off the gross. What you won't be doing now is taking it off the gross. It won't touch the gross uh, amount at all, and it will get put into one of two areas. They're both, they're both under the salary sacrifice year to date, um, but the, there's one type S, which is the normal salary sacrifice that again is just going into your retirement services, your savings account. And then the other one, uh, the other salary sacrifice is type O, which could be for things like novated leases. And again, you need to look at the definitions to make sure that you put uh, the salary sacrifice in the correct place. So as I said, you won't be putting it into gross, you'll be putting it into its own area and you will be dividing it up. So it's very important that you do look at the ATO's information so that you can get those classifications correct. And so here I have a, uh, an example. This is off the ATO website, so um, you can see it. So Anita earns $100,000 and she sacrifices $5,000 into superannuation and she uh, has also got a 20,000 novated lease. In STP phase one, which they're in at the moment, she has reported $75,000 worth of income because of course the 25,000 off the 100,000 gives you 75,000. In STP phase two, she will report the gross as $100,000, the salary sacrifice type S as $5,000, assuming we're at the end of the year, and the salary sacrifice type O as $20,000. So it will still show that her income is less that salary sacrifice and as, as 75,000, but it will show the gross. And again, this is for information being passed on to Services Australia. So it will just be a matter of filling in that information and leaving the gross as it was originally. Then we've got changes to the lump sums. Um, so if you make a lump sum e-payment each financial year, it, it'll, you'll be able to define the relevant um, financial year that it's about. And of course, this does change the tax. So again, it's going to make it easier for the ATO when they are doing the end, their end of year, when they're doing the person's taxation, they have that information straight away. And then we're also having a new lump sum W which we haven't had previously. And this is for people returning to work. Um, obviously, it's not going to be many of us using it, uh, but it is taxed concessionally. And so again, it was formally reported as a gross amount in the gross amount, and now it's being separated out into its own lump sum. So again, the more definition we're doing is we're helping the ATO when they are completing a person's tax return or when the accountants are completing a person's tax return. So again, these are the different sorts of um, codes that are to do with the lump sums, which I'm sure you are used to, uh, you know, whether it's a life benefit, whether it's a death benefit, that sort of information. So all of that information is still going to be on there. Um, it's just going to be a bit more refined. The BMS ID, as I mentioned before, there is a slot there for you to put that information in if you are changing from other software. If you're just changing from STP1 to STP2, then that's not needed because it's the same BMS that you have been using all along. This is just for when you are changing software because um, there have been mistakes made where people end up with their income doubled uh, because of that mistake. Child support, again, it's being separated out. Is it a garnishee or is it a child support deduction? You're able to define those, put them into their correct places. So again, um, that information will be going to Services Australia. So hopefully the idea is that ultimately there will be less reporting for the employer um, with all this sort of information. 
Tiana, is there any questions or anything that you would like to add or Sandy would like to add at this point? Uh, we don't have any Hi. questions at the moment. Yep. Uh, is there anything that you would like to add? It's all good. So I've got oh. most of them. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. So preparing for change, and we've certainly done a lot of that in the last two years. Uh, in fact, I don't think we've had a moment to stop changing, have we? So again, this is another uh, area of change that we have to take care of. So with STP2, um, as I've already said, the, there's going to be a breakup of the payroll categories. So the ATO call that ATO reporting categories. So you need to gather all the, for the, each client, you need to gather what payroll categories do they use? Do they use annual leave, overtime, director's fees? So you need to, in your preparation, get all that information. What is the normal um, payroll categories that they use? And so that you can see where it is going to the ATO reporting categories so that you can match that. Then you need to gather all the information for, for the employees so that all their personal information and their employment information. So again, you can have that at the ready so you can put that in because as I've mentioned, a lot of information that we may only tell the ATO once, we are now going to be telling them every time we lodge an STP lodgement. So you need to gather all those payroll categories for the employees as well. And remember that when we are entering the information about the employees, we are actually entering that year to date figure. So when if they get $100 this week, we're not entering $100, we're entering whatever the sum is that they've earned between July and now. So it is that um, year to date figure. Employees are still completing a tax file number declaration. And that becomes crucial in this STP too, because you are going to be putting, as I said, this previously uh, an employee filled it out and we sent it to the ATO, never to think of it again. We may have put it into some software, so you know, their, their, um, their TFN, but basically uh, we dealt with it, we folded the paper away, stuck it in a filing cabinet. Now we're going to be putting that information in the STP2. And so each time we do a lodgement, that information of whether they're part-time, whether they're full-time, whether they're casual, whether they're a holiday maker, whether they're claiming their tax-free threshold, whether they've got a hex debt, all of that information is going to be sent to the ATO each time they um, you do a lodgement. So it means that if their circumstances change, you need to make sure that you do get a new tax file declaration from them. So if they are going from part-time to full-time or part-time to casual, if they're changing that previously, uh, please, you know, cl we're claiming the um, tax-free threshold and now they're changing not to, you're going to need to make sure that you get that tax file declaration so that you can change that information in the STP too. Sense. So these are some useful links from the ATO. I would absolutely recommend that you go and look at their employer reporting guidelines because they do have all of the information and they have a lot of explanation with it. And I have, when I have been doing this webinar, I used the ATO employer report guidelines and the help screens of Gov reports to give me what I felt was the rounded information that I needed. So definitely recommend that you have a look at those. So for example, here is the comparison. Now in um, the reporting category, they obviously have gross wage. Now in STP1, we put everything, all of the things that are on that screen into gross wages. What we're doing now, and you'll see that there is one list there that says shouldn't be included as gross. So they are going to be separated out of the gross. And um, a lot of them are very common. So allowances, there are allowances that you've put in gross 
you need to make sure that they, they come out and go into their own area. Paid leave, and you'll see there that that includes rostered days off and time off in lieu. So that needs to be taken out, and this is why you need a list of all your payroll categories for each of your employees, so you know which employees are gonna to have to have information changed. Uh, the bonuses, commissions, director's fees, the lump sum W again, which it's not necessarily expected to be widely used, but it does need to be, and of course the salary sacrifice. Um, there is another specific um, Gov reports instruction about before you change over to STP phase two, and that is that if you've got any draft records that you need to either delete them or convert them and lodge them uh, because you need to have a nice clean slate uh, when you change over. It just makes it easy because you won't be able to upgrade those drafts. So just be aware that you do need to look and see that you've got nothing there in draft format uh, before you change over. And as I mentioned, um, GovReport's Help Centre is a great place. As I said, I, I use this help extensively and it has the single touch payroll help guide and there's also the single touch payroll import specification document. So if you do use the CSV file, you can go to the Help Centre and get all the information for making sure you um, have all the necessary breakup for the different areas that have to be changed. So when you um, select single touch payroll help guide, you'll see that is all of the different areas uh, that there is information in there about. So, you know, checking and correcting errors, rolling over end of year, um, update events, all that sort of information is there. So you, it is really highly recommend the help guide. They've done, the guys at GovReports have done a wonderful job. So I might ask Tiana or Sandeep again, is there anything that you want to mention at this moment? All good. Just one question okay. over here. So we have a question yep. from uh, question from one of our customers. So in terms of director's fees, I assume that only applies to non-executive directors. Executive directors are fully full-time employees. Um, I honestly can't say that I would suggest that this is where you need to look at that ATO guideline because they that's where they give and um, don't always assume that it is just director's fees for employees. So um, I can't confirm that. Sandy, do you know? Uh, so as far as I know, there is no dis I mean, no distinction between uh, non-executive or executive directors. So generally on the STP, they say is that director's fee should be included on the income stream director's fees field. Okay. So yeah, thank you. But yes, I would absolutely recommend that you go and look at the ATO employer guidelines. Thanks. Okay. So converting now, let's convert. We've looked at it, we've, we've got all our preparation done, and now we're gonna bite the bullet and convert to STP phase two. So first of all, uh, and I'm hopefully uh, sure that you're all aware of what these screens are, we're going to my client. So we're gonna select the client and we're going under the action uh, column and picking forms. Now, if we don't go that way, uh, then we can also go uh, pick the client, select the client, and then go to that forms button there. So it is available now, and and um, my what I have done to try and make my life easier, because it's November and it's not yet January, and people weren't asking me. I um, actually converted my easiest client, uh, so that their payroll is very straightforward. And I thought, well, I'll have a go and see how, you know, what silly mistakes I make. And um, it is e it is very easy and my goodness me, it will take me no time once, um, you know, it keeps going. But the big thing to know is once you convert a client, you can't go back. So you really need to make sure that you are ready to convert that client. So again, you might wanna do what I've done, which is pick your easiest client to, convert and um, see how that, you know, see what 
traps there are for you because we all have some things that we don't always uh, notice and see. So once I pick the form, it comes up with the forms because I'm a BAS agent that I'm allowed to um, select from. Obviously, if you're an accountant, you're gonna have a longer list than me. But if I have used my STP payroll events um, and it has the red button there, which is, as I said, which is available right now, um, for me to change to the new version. Now, if I click on that new version, it comes up with a message and it just tells you that it's not mandated till January 2022. Um, but if you're ready to switch, you can switch, but it is irreversible. So um, it does give you that, that chance to say, oh, well, no, I'm not quite ready yet, I will wait. But so once you confirm it, it will then uh, swap you over. And that's as easy as it is to actually convert. There obviously is gonna be a little bit more work. Now, if you happen to have gone into it without picking the red button, um, you can actually see that there is a new button also on that first screen that you're used to for STP1. And how will you know that you've gone from STP1 to STP2 is basically the STP1 screen, which is on the screen at the moment, is white. Whereas if you go to STP2, you are going to see a gray, a gray screen. So once you have selected the new version, the STP payroll event screen will load. It'll check for pre-filled information. So it will bring that pre-filled information across. You need to check, that's the first thing you need to do when it comes up, is to check that that pre-filled information is as you expect. So again, it might be worth you making sure that you've printed out uh, a previous STP1 so that you do have all those you know, details of the BMS, et cetera, and the company name and uh, everything that it is normally sent to the ATO. Um, the re reporting info for the specified pay period, again, is in this first section that you're looking at, and you need to make sure that you've got the dates that for the pay period, so whether you're, you know, whether you're paying monthly, weekly, fortnightly, whatever, you've got to make sure that you have that information in there. Now, if you make a mistake at this point, you will need to close it down and um, start a new, uh, a new STP lodgement. So this is what it looks like. It's just basically grey. It's the same information that you have always seen on the STP1. It's just in a slightly different format. So you'll see in section one is the pre-filled employer information. So it's got your email address. It's got the submission ID, which you need if you know you need to ring up the ATO for whatever reason. It's got the company name, the ABN, their branch number, the person that is registered to be uh, contacted if the ATO name and address, that sort of information. The second section is where you're gonna specify the period of um, your payroll. And this next section, uh, the total gross payment for that pay period. This is also where you define whether it's an update event or a pay event, or if you've still got anything to do with JobMaker. Then section three is where you add your employees. Section four is the declaration as an agent that you're saying um, that um, I have prepared this payroll in accordance. So, and obviously you're signing that and you're putting that date on. And then section five is your saving and your lodging. So you can see that you can save as you go. So if you have a bit of concerns, you wanna make sure that you've got it right, you can save as you go. And of course you can save it as a draft. You can either save it and send it for a signature or you can lodge it directly, of course, depending on your authorizations. So as I mentioned, the second section has the normal pay period. So whatever dates that you normally are, and then of course, what is the date of payment? Because that is very important because you are supposed to be lodging this before or on that date. So again, the ATO, as far as I know, haven't done much about it, but as we get into it and we get more comfortable with it, then they are gonna be inquiring if you are um, always late. 
The section on the other side, as I said, is the gross pay for that pay period. So if you've got five staff and they each get $1,000, that's going to have $5,000 in it. It's just for the pay period. Um, and so once you've filled that information in, you then go to section three to add the employees. Now, you'll see that there is a green button there that says add employees. You certainly, for a new employee, can go in there, put all of their details in. But if you're um, starting from scratch, then you've got the manual entry or your import. So you've got a CSV file that you can import. Or if you have been working on it a while, you've got the rollover. And it's something when I've got a client with just a couple of employees, I use that rollover. Um, all the time. So if you are setting it up the first time and you are like me that you use the rollover, I would definitely uh, recommend that you've got to use the manual entry uh, for that first, uh, first pay lodgement that you're doing with STP2. So here we have again, and this is just um, hopefully just to show you, it is quite simple once the information's in there. I've got my dates and my date of payment. I can change it to an update event from here just by moving that little circle. I have got my gross wages for the pay period and my tax. I don't think that looks quite right, but we'll go with it. And then I need to add an employee. So here is um, what that screen looks like to add the employee. The first section again is in sections just to make so that we know some that are going to be pre-filled immediately and some that we're going to have to fill in. So the add employee uh, name, their payroll ID, their tax file number, their date of birth, all that information that you should have had from their tax file declaration or from when you um, onboarded them as employees. You then, the second section there, the employment conditions. This is where you have when they commenced. Are they part-time or full-time? You know, have they ceased working with you? Is there a tax offset? Again, information that has come from the tax file declaration, except this time you are going to be telling the ATO every time you make a lodgement. This is also where we pick the category of their tax treatment. So you'll see it's got regular in there, but the list, which I love the list, the list has quite a few different choices again so that you can get the right tax code. I love the fact that we've got regular and then we've got actors. Um, that just really amuses me for some reason, I don't know why. So once you pick regular, you'll then see that the option which is the next one beside it has three options. So if I'd picked holiday make, working holiday maker, I would get a different selection there. Or if I picked, you know, no TFN, I'm going to get a different selection here. I pick with tax free threshold, again, coming from my, tax, my TFN deck. And once I select that, the tax treatment, the next uh, one here, that is automatic, that it comes up. So you've picked that tax treatment as, by picking the category and the option. So again, if you have Medicare levies um, or exemptions, that sort of information, then you tick all of that. And when you roll it over or when you then do it with a import, you're going to have that information in there each time. Um, so here again, just uh, automated, if you like, I've done all that. I've now picked a pay run and I am defining what sort of wages or what sort of, you know, am I treating them like? So these are salary and wages. I then need to add income, I need to add that little green button so that I can put in their year to date figures. So this is very important. This is their year to date. What have they earned between July and now? And you'll see there's overtime, there's bonuses, there's, uh, you know, paid leave, allowances. Obviously you complete that, all that um, payroll categories that they have used. I'm then going down to my superannuation guarantee. I'm picking what sort of super it is. It's ordinary times earnings. And again, I'm putting in the year to date figure for that employee. And then I'm going to save. And I need to do that, especially the first time uh, for each of the employees.
So again, I might be laboring this a bit, bit much, but I really want to make it clear that the information on the front screen that is saying specified pay period is, that's their wages for that pay period. So if you have a normal $5,000 wage, uh, you know, each week, then that's the information that you're putting in there. Whereas on each of the employees, you are putting the information on their year to date, what they have earned so far up until the point that you're doing this pay. So here again, I'm going to my forms. Now you'll see that once I've changed over to STP2, it doesn't change, you know, it doesn't have the little red box. So I'm going to roll over. So this is after I have done that first payroll and I'm going to hit roll over and I'm going to select a payroll that I've done before and say, please uh, bring all of that information forward. Now, what you'll also notice is there is a lot of red on there and that means that it brings over errors. They're not, they are errors and they're not errors. They are areas that have been blanked out that you need to fill out because of this new pay and they will disappear as you actually do that. But they're, they're telling you that they're information that you haven't yet filled out. So it's, it's not something necessarily that you need to panic. Uh, you just need to fill out all of the employee's information. So this is what, as I said, doing the rollover. Um, when you do that, it obviously needs to wipe out the figures that it rolled over, but it brings over all their names and addresses, et cetera, like that. So this is the same uh, thing you'll see. I've not got quite as many errors here, but I do want to um, show you how the errors disappear. So I've got the information, all the wages information. I now need to go and fill out two of my employees that I haven't yet done. So I'm going to edit those. The employee comes up and now I go down and fill out the information that is their year to date. And I'm reasonably reckless about this. I'm just going to fill it out and then see if I forgot anything. And of course I actually did. I forgot to put in their PAYG. So it is forgiving, it allows you to do those sorts of things. And then once I hit save, what you'll see is three of those red dots, those errors have disappeared because now they've got the information for um, that employee. So now I go and do the other employee that I haven't completed. Again, I remember to do the PAYG correctly for this time and I would add in obviously any payroll category that I need. I hit save and again, more red errors go. So again, I'm slightly reckless and I go, yeah, yeah, let's just, you know, just submit this, this will be fine. And I am right because I have done everything. And so those errors actually, even though when you first see them, you think, oh, goodness me, all of these mistakes I've done, they are just telling you that it needs more information and therefore it really does help you um, being relaxed about, yeah, well, as they disappear, and you know, you know, it's going to be a tick here, or you need to put an amount there. Um, it will make it much easier to do that, if that makes sense. And then this is the lodgement form, and again, it's very similar to the previous lodgement form for STP1. I think it's pretty much the same. Um, and this is where oh, there's a few extra areas. And this is the form that you can send to your client for authorization of lodgement. Again, depending on how your authorization is, whether you do it annually or whether you do it um, per pay. And you know, the usual sent for signature, uh, all of that is just worked how it always does in Gov reports. Um, Tiana, Sandeep, is there any questions or anything you'd like to add? We had questions from Wendy. Um, it's regarding uh, the year-to-date figures. So when you put in the payroll manually, when you lodge, lodge it, does it send only the year-to-date uh, to the ATO? For the employee, it sends the year-to-date figures. And for the whole company, it sends the wage that you've set up on that first screen. 
Does that make sense to you, Chan? Is there a better way of saying that? Or in section two, which is the yeah. uh, the pay period, it's only the include the pay period for that uh, for the company as a whole, and all the include all the wages for all the employees and the PAYG withheld uh, for all the employees and all, any other uh, figures on that for that pay period. But in the employee sections, it should have the year to date figures, including this paid. Yes, thank you. Yes, yeah, so um, yes, Wendy, that's the way uh, I've always filled them out. So again, it is the same as you've previously filled it out. You're just gonna have maybe more sections that you're filling out. Anything else? Nope. Yep, no, that, that this is different. I think there's questions uh, relating to, so we have two systems. In Gov reports, you need to enter manually the year to date and do the calculation on your own as to how much the tax, the the, the pay, et cetera. But in, in IAM or in normal payroll software, uh, the payroll module, uh, much of the calculations are done automatically. You need to check which software did you use, but in this particular webinar, we are only focusing on the GovReports platform, the reporting platform. Yes, yeah, so if you're using the IM um, software, then it's different again. Uh, it's it's working it out, isn't it, Tiana? Yeah, that's, that's correct. We do have another question uh, that just came up uh, from Rajesh. Can TFN declarations be filed by Gov reports with STP and will STP2 pick up that information from the declarations and finally will that roll over with the other two information or does it need to be put into every time? Do you no, want to if you that? if you um, roll it over, then that's for me, which is why I do it when I've got a client who's only got two employees and I just roll it over. That brings that information forward. Um, in terms, yeah, in terms of TFN declarations uh, filed via Gov reports, if it's included as part of the onboarding process, onboarding sections in the, the STP form, um, you only need to fill it out the first time or the, the, the initial time when they, they uh, the employee joined the, the onboarding sections. Subsequent time, you don't have to do that anymore. And as you, as Deborah mentioned earlier, in subsequent pay run, if the pay are similar, I mean, if you have the same employee, you can roll over the details and fill in the, the, the pay, the year to date, and uh, of course their date. Um, you don't have to fill out the details as it's already rollover. Yes, which is why I use it. Cool. Okay, so okay. we do have a, we do have another questions from. Uh, yep. How can you get a report showing all the details for each employee, not just the summary amount? Uh, Deborah, do you want me to answer that? Please, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, when you, after you have lodged or before you've lodged, you can actually uh, go into the employee's details. In the employee's details, you've got the print options, and that will print print out. That will give you the um, the the, all the components of the pay for that particular employee. Do we have a report showing, you know, but all, basically all the employees, they've got multiple employees, uh, Sendip, uh, of all the components in it, like a spreadsheet? I don't think we have it at the moment, but individually, yes. And I would, and I would actually possibly keep that as my reporting, as my worksheets for the payroll so that I have a list, you know, I have a printout of all of that information. Tiana, is there anything else or shall I? No, nope, that's it. All right. Okay, cool. Thank you. So now we're going to have a look at the, S, uh, the CSV files and um, there is the uh, blog address to get that special STP phase two CSV file template that has been updated with all of the sections. Now, I don't want this screen to frighten you because you know I can understand if you go, oh, goodness me, that's a lot of information. But it is every basically column in the spreadsheet and it's got that information of what you need to put into it so that you certainly can um, you know, look at it if you like all the detail. I um, use the, the sample one so that to me, that helped me understand um, the breakup of what's in what column. But you do need, need to download that STP phase two template CSV 
if you are going to, if you do want to import uh, the wages each fortnight, weekly, month, whatever it is. So this is what the spreadsheet looks like, and it is very long. There are a lot of columns because there is, there could be a lot of information that each in, each employee has. Now, what also, which I which I notice in the help for Gov reports, is they do have some information on importing from Chris Twenty One. Now, I've never used that program. I don't know what it's like. But um, Gov Reports has got some information there to help you show you how to do it and, and screenshots. There's also importing from Reckon and there's importing from MYOB Payroll Advice Report. So again, that information is there. Definitely go to the help screens to look at that so that you can get it in the right um, section. So as I said, um, I use the STP Phase 2 template that is available through the blog. Now, this may look, uh, again, a bit more concise, but still a bit scary because you've got, um, you know, employee number, period, start, period, end. Once you sort of get used to your head around how the wording goes, because it is the ATO who's decided what things are called, um, and if you're using that template and putting them in, um, in those areas, it will show you if you need to map anything. Now, if you use the old um, STP CSV template, then you may need to do mapping because it doesn't have all of the categories, um, all of the columns there, whereas the new version is going to have all of the, the columns. So remember to download that new one. But basically, you um, each area, each, each like ordinary earnings has its own column that you need to put that information in. Once you're happy that you've got the, um, the template set up, uh, you then just go in to create your new lodgement. Again, you go to you select your client, you select the forms, you select STP, you make sure that you put your reporting info for the specific period in and the total gross wages for that week, fortnight, month, whatever. You then go to the import. So where instead of adding employees or manual or rollover, you go to the middle one, which is import. When you click on that, you will see that there is that list of the, Z, the CSV version two, version one, the Reckon, the MYB, the Chris 21. So that depending on which one of those you're using, you can pick the appropriate CSV file. Uh, you pick that file in and then um, you import the information in. So you obviously need to keep the file somewhere that you, um, I mean, I would personally create a special folder for it. And of course, you need to make sure that when you rename that each week, fortnight, whatever you're doing, that you make sure that you, you date it obviously what, you know, what your pay week is so that you can bring that information in and you don't bring in the incorrect. Of course, if you do, you could run an update event to fix it. So here we have got the front screen and instead of add employees, I'm going to import. I'm going to pick the version two CSV file. I'm going off, I found it, I'm dropping it in there as it's the instructions. It then does its little check and comes up with and there's nothing there because I've been lucky and used the, the right template, all of the information's correct. I hit next and the form, um, the system itself checks the import, makes sure that it's okay. I tell it to import and it comes up with a log or I can go directly to the imported information. Now, what you'll see, it's brought all of that information in and I'm rather reckless and I think, yep, that's great, I'm just gonna hit submit, validate it and submit. And of course, it won't let me do that unless all of the information is there and it does give me four errors that I need to fix. And again, I'm a little bit cavalier in this oh, I think, oh yeah, all I do is need to tick that. And again, I try and submit it. And of course it tells me, no, there's still two other things that I haven't entered correctly. So it, I haven't put the, the wages in for that 
uh, pay period. So it is not going to let you um, lodge something that is incorrect. Uh, it will be checking that and the errors are there uh, really to tell you, you know, what you need to take care of. So again, once we have um, submitted and I've saved it, I can go in and there is my STP payroll event. And again, I can send that to my client for authorization um, so that I can lodge the form. So in a nutshell, um, that's everything that I have to tell you today. Um, I would absolutely recommend that you look at the uh, help guide in GovReports. It is really great and it's got lots of screenshots there so that you can see what, you know, what you're expected to look for and go to the ATO's uh, website and their employer guide so that you can get all of the information on what you need to divide and then you need to look at getting your employees payroll categories so you need what you know what you need to use. So Tiana is there anything else that you and Sandeep would like to add? Um, I'd like to um, make sure you know make a comment here I mean Deborah you make you mentioned earlier if um, you know Look, I know that it's it's going to start comments from from next year, March next year. But if you start early, you probably start to get familiar with it and not getting stressed out if you have a lot of clients that you need to report STP to for. Um, and probably to start with, uh, as, you know, clients as Deborah said, someone who's very simple, so that you can get familiar with with the form. And then as you you know start reporting for more more complex clients or clients that have more employees, um, then you can understand and have that uh, systematically and uh, less uh, um, issues that that might arise so like i said you can start now we we our system is ready and ato is ready uh, but um, and it's good to start with someone simple yeah look i i, I mean i i did it myself tiana to see you know what i would be oblivious to that I didn't realise. And I did have to ring up Sandeep and ask him for some help. Um, but it was a simple fix. I knew which button then to press. And of course, like all of us, sometimes we learn better when we've made mistakes. So if you start off with somebody who's just got, you know, a, a straightforward payroll, a couple of people, um, it really does, it really does help. And I recommend what Tiana says. Cool. Anything else, Tiana, that you want to tell them? everybody not really anyone else that has any questions i don't think we have any further questions we've gone through them all earlier i definitely um, recommend that you look at the help the gov reports help center they've done a great job with it we have updated on to gov reports yes and we'll be adding more videos, uh, short videos as well. And like I said, if you have questions during the webinar, it is recorded and will be posted on our website after tomorrow, after today. So you can revisit the, the sessions if you need to. And if you've got questions that were not answered during these sessions, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. And thank you all very much. And thank you, Tiana and Sandeep. For, I enjoy doing this and I always learn something as well. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Once again, thank you for your attendance. Um, happy Gov reportings on STP phase two. And um, yeah, it looks like that's it. Bye for now.